Welcome along to another episode of the J1 League Goal Zone. Get ready for a full plate of sizzling action coming to you from the land of the rising sun. This is the best in Asia, the top of their class in Japan. A look at the fixtures this round, Tokyo travelled north to play Consadole and a relegation battle was in place at the Yutek Stadium for Galta and Yokohama. Leaders Kawasaki paid a visit to Kashiwa and the Antlers were at home to face Fukushima. Over in Shizuoka, Shimitsu had been headed down a path towards the drop zone. Only one win in their last five and now coming up against a Gamba side that had finally picked themselves up after a difficult start to the campaign. And there was an early chance for Gamba, Leandro Pereira rising high at the far post in the seventh minute, but his effort meeting the goal frame. Shimitsu tried from much further out in the 15th minute. Thiago Santana's left-footed shot tipped around the post by Higashiguchi. From the resulting corner, and the woodwork was certainly winning this contest early on, Valdo's header denied. But 10 minutes into the second half, it looked as if Santana had opened the scoring. Careful look at the replay, clearly shows though, he didn't head that one in, he punched it in with his hand. Two minutes later and Pereira's shot takes a deflection, and the woodwork wins that contest again. But there was time for just one goal and that would be the winner. Eight minutes left, Hiroto Yamami's super left-footed curling shot takes the three points. A big win in the last round for Consadole snapped a four-game winless run for the home team, a result that lifted them into the top half. They would host the Tokyo side that sat a couple of spots above them. Here's Patrick Kinghorn. He looks like he's up for this today. Leandro again, threading it through to Adelton, who's going to get the run and get there first! And that's a fantastic goal by FC Tokyo! Leandro and Adelton have threatened through the first 120 seconds in an almost non-stop fashion, and with their second foray, the Leandro-Adelton combination score an absolute peach of a goal. Look at this, coast to coast, Adelton starting it. And just as he did in the first 12 seconds, he got it to Leandro. What about that pass from Leandro? An assist of beauty, a finish of brilliance, and FC Tokyo lead early at the Sapporo Dome. Kaneko. Keeper spilled in, and Onishima's got the rebound. And it's the equaliser that Sapporo deserve. Well, it will have to go down as a goalkeeping mistake, I think, from Gohatano. If you can't catch, you've got to parry it away to safety. He couldn't catch it, but he couldn't parry it either. And it dropped right in front of Toyoshi Ogashiwa, who's got his second goal in two games now. Kaneko once again gets the better of that battle with Bang Naganda. And when the keeper spilled it, despite there being three white shirts surrounding one red one, it was Ogashiwa who could bundle it home. Itawa gets himself in a muddle there. Leandro nearly capitalised, and Leandro does capitalise. Look at that touch to take it off Shinta Tanaka. Leandro into the area. Leandro, Adelton again! And they've retaken the lead with more brilliance between the Brazilian double act of Adelton and Leandro. And Sapporo will be kicking themselves in with Miyazawa, of all people, usually so reliable with the slip. Shunta Tanaka had it taken off his toes by Leandro. Have a look at this. Leandro does brilliantly. And look at the run from Adelta. Leandro ex knows exactly where he is and where he's coming in from. And Adelta with a stunning finish as we enter the first of somewhat surprisingly three minutes of time added on. Sapporo are behind the eight ball once again. With the top, that's a great ball, and they beat the offside line, and they're level! <laughs> Wonderful goal! Route one stuff, but a lovely deft touch to square the ball to Ryota Yoki. And Yoki with his first goal of the season, gets Sapporo back on level terms inside the first five minutes of the second half. That looked oh so simple. 
And we've got a goal fest here at the Sapporo Dome. Who else but Fukumori with a beautiful pass, a wonderfully timed run by Ogashiwa. And a great touch. Look at the quality on what is the third world-class assist of the game. To put it on a plate for Ryota Aoki to make it. Hokkaido Konsadone Sapporo 2, FC Tokyo 2. Just going to be bold and brave and go for this fifth goal that could potentially be the winner. Here's Daiki Suga. Fukumori found another perfect pass. Look at that chest down. Oh, and they're in again. And they now do lead. Aoki's also on a hat-trick. What about that from Jay Bothroyd, by the way? They've come from behind twice. And Konsa lead by three goals to two. And just like the goal that drew them level after the break, the one that's given them their first go-ahead goal in the match came after great work through the middle from Jay Bothroyd. Ryota Aoki, his first and second goals of the season have both come in the second half of this one, got there before Gohatano, who couldn't keep it out. But having waxed lyrical about the assists, two of them from Leandro and one from Ogashiwa, you can add Jay Bothroyd to the list of world-class assists we've seen here at the Sapporo Dome this afternoon. Going to move quickly here, Shinada. They found a chance, they found an opening. Can they get the shot away? Maybe they can. They do, but Mita's effort is up and over, and our referee has seen enough. A stunning win by Constantinople Sapporo. They come from behind twice. They were much the better side over the course of the 90 minutes, despite starting slowly. It was that man of Delton that gave Tokyo the dream start after just two minutes after wonderful link-up play with Leandro. Some fantastic football and a big win for Sapporo. They're up to seventh. They've beaten FC Tokyo by three goals to two. Two sides stuck in the relegation hole would be desperate for victory as they look to take advantage of their opponent's woes. No wins for Vigalta in five, and despite wins for Yokohama, they still remain bottom of the table. An early chance for Vigalta's Kunimitsu Sekiguchi, but as you can see from the replay, he completely mistimed his contact. But a much cleaner strike from him seven minutes later. His right-footed shot coming back off the upright. They were getting closer and closer. This one in the 12th minute, Shuhei Akasaki. Denied by Sven Brodersen in goal. But Yokohama was still very much in this. Good approach work and Yusuke Matsuo's shot saved by Jakub Slowe. And Matsuo would get another chance on the stroke of half-time. Not quite enough power behind that left-footed shot, and Slowik gathered it easily enough. This then would be a battle that the goalkeepers won. Felipe Cardoso's chance denied by Bordeson, nil-nil the final score. A defeat over the weekend meant Urawa were now winless in three. They welcomed Sagan, a side unbeaten in five, and armed with the best defence in the league. It could possibly spell trouble for the Reds. Just four minutes in and good work on the left-hand side from Tomoya Koyamatsu. He finds Keita Yamashita, his shot well saved by Shusaku Nishikawa. Nine minutes from the break, and Urawa on the attack. Good vision from Tomooki Makino, a deft touch on the chest from Ataru Isaka, and Takahiro Akimoto threw on goal to make it 1-0. But these two sides would go into the break level at half-time. Yamashita driving a half volley home from close range with his right foot, and that's 1-1. Ataru Isaka in action again early in the second half. He draws a save from Park il Gyu, and the follow-up effort is cleared off the line. Approaching the hour mark and Sagan Tosu looking to go 2-1 up. Yamashita's shot just too high. 
But there was drama to come in rain-sodden conditions with eight minutes remaining. The referee spotted a foul in the penalty area. Isaka stepped up and smashed that one home into the roof of the net. Urawa Red Diamonds take this one by two goals to one. Kawasaki look to continue their stranglehold on the league as they headed to Kashiwa this round. Even without their young wizard Kaoru Mitoma, who took a transfer to the Premier League with Brighton, the leaders would still have plenty of tricks up their sleeve. Here's Mark Richmond. Mitsumaru now has found some room. And it's gone to the far post where Pedro Raul was lurking. He's been in very good goal scoring form lately. Three goals in his last five appearances for Kashira Resol. It's Hasegawa who's uh, made room for that space inside, tried to just lift it inside the penalty box for Yanaga. It's dropped to Hatate. And from clutching his back a few seconds ago, all to almost finding the back of the net. This time the cross is easily met by Jesse L. His loose pass gave them the opportunity in the first place. Hatate took a real hit then. Yanaga comes away with the ball. Miyagi wants it, but the referee says it's going to be a yellow card. It's a red for Richardson. Well, this uh, might be a game changer. A red card given. Was that for Kamijima? I believe it is. And Kamijima becomes the eighth sending off in this fixture. Wakizaka. Yanaga. Floats that one in, easily headed away by Koga! Great effort it was from Nobori Zato. A player who hasn't scored in three years, three and a half years, almost just bulleting one into the back of the net. Yamane has been very quiet in this fixture. And just as you say that, he sets up a super pass. Oh, should have been the opening goal. What a save it was from Seong Yu. And Ten Miyagi was almost off celebrating already when he made contact with the ball. Ten Miyagi finds himself in another promising position. Oh, comes off the upright. Very unlucky. Pedro Raul has held it up superbly well. Yamane, is he going to take that shot on? It's a lovely ball inside to Kobayashi, who sets it up. And seong once again with another outstanding save. Tachi Banada. Kurumaya available. Here is Shintaro Kurumaya! Another flying stop from Kim seong -gyu. This time he had room. And too close to the goalkeeper in the end from the substitute. For the first time in 39 games, Kawasaki Frontale failed to score. For the first time in 2021, they failed to score. They don't lose though, but they dropped two precious points against Kashiwa Resol in the defense of the title. Final score then at the Sankyo Frontier Stadium, 0-0. Great work from Resol, forcing a share of the points. Coming up on the other side, we have a new hat-trick hero. Our fifth of the season, we'll spill the beans after the break. Nothing says football in Asia quite like the J1 League Goal Zone. Time for more goals then, and with a couple of worthy contenders for goal of the season. Let's start in Yokohama. The Mariners dropped a couple of precious points in the last round, which didn't help their cause in keeping Kawasaki honest. Faced with Oita this time out, the hosts should be able to get back to winning ways, with their opponents knee-deep in relegation. Here's Patrick Kinghorn once again. Lovely deft touch by Awata. Nakagawa to the byline, and it's finished off by Dyson Maida quite beautifully. Goal number 11 for the Olympian Maida. His first since wearing the under-23 shirt of Japan during the Tokyo Olympics. And after being frustrated for just shy of half an hour, the breakthrough comes, and it's a classic Marinos goal. Wonderful pass by 
Iwata, lovely pull bite by Nakagawa, and Dyson Maida was there. Corner number two for Oita. And it finds its target as well on the air level. Well, the Marinos have looked likely to concede for all the possession they've had. And from a set piece, Trinita have made them pay. Good corner delivery by Hakoto Shimoda. And the Marinos guilty in a couple of cases there of ball watching. And that is a fine headed finish beyond Takioka, who never had a chance. It's off the post and it's in. Firm head, oh, that's a dangerous back header. Leo Kiera's on to this, should be 2 1. Is 2 1. Right at half time, the Marinos retake the lead, capitalising from an offensive horror show from Oita Trinita. And Leo Kiera's third goal in a Marinos shirt in his third of the season is a real poacher's goal. Here's Iwata. Straight into an offside position. Onihara takes over the mantle, and this time he does thread it through to Dyson Maida, who squares it to Leo Kiera, and the Marinos have their two goal buffer. The Brazilian has a brace, and the Marinos have a two goal gap in their quest to close the gap down to six points, with only Frontali ahead of him in the league. A shine of the shoes for Dyson Maida, an appreciation of the assist from Leo Kiera, who initially had straight into an offside position. There's no issues, I don't think, with Dyson Maida. And he squares that ball, and when he does, Leo Kiera is onside and slots it home. This is Mizanuma over the top, looking for Dyson Maida. What a perfect pass that is, a brilliant first touch. Dyson Maida, oh, it's an absolute scorcher! The goal of the game with 15 to play, and Dyson Maida, another player and a hat-trick. He's got two, and if you thought Leo Carrera's lob in the first half was special, that is simply sensational. Mizanuma looks up, Dyson Maida, he sees, he's onside, surely it will stand. Look at this for a finish. 25 yards out. Takagi, absolutely no chance. Elba, look at the pace, the Brazilian into the area, can he square the ball to Maida? It's the hat-trick, he looks across, I think it's going to be struck off, it won't count. Or will it? No, it will! Oh, extraordinary! Well, I think the ball had been played backwards in any event. Dyson Maida has notched a hat-trick. It's only the fifth hat-trick in J1 this season, the first since June. And the Marinos is Olympian. And that will just about do it. I'm sure Yudai Yamamoto will signal the end of this game within seconds. Five goals for the Yokohama F Marinos. They've closed the gap at the top of the table. It's finished here. Marinos five, Oita Trinita one. Big setback for Nagoya as they lost to bottom side Yokohama last time out and they now have had no wins in their last six. A chance to bounce back if they can manage to get the better of Shonan who lost four games in a row. A very early chance for Shonan with just three minutes on the clock. Ryo Takahashi's free kick finds Daiki Sugioka. His header brushes the crossbar. On the half hour mark, Wellington supplies Shintaro Nago, who always looked as if he was keen for a long range effort. He eventually got it off, but to no positive effect. 46th minute and a delightful cross from Yutaka Yoshida. Mateus did manage to get on the end of it, but with not quite enough purchase. Mateus involved again in the 59th minute. Was it a cross? Was it a shot? Either way, Kosei Tane had to deal with it. The crowd were out of their seats in the 71st minute. Yuki Soma with a centre from the left-hand side that goes all the way across the face of the goal. Schmiershot gets on the end of it, but it comes back off the upright. Nil-nil with 16 minutes remaining. A deep corner from the Goya finds Kim Min Tae, and that's the opener on his debut. There was still time to make it 2-0. A mistake from Shonan puts Sphere Shock through again, but this time he can't keep the opportunity down 
it finishes 1-0 to the home team. Back-to-back -back wins for Kashima now, and a good run of form puts them in a position to make the top three. Their opponents, though, had deep problems of their own. Tokushima just a whisker from the drop zone. A fifth-minute free kick opportunity for the Antlers. Three walls and a draft excluder. The shot takes a deflection, and that's an early 1-0 lead. More deflection horror at the other end ten minutes later. Eventually, Kazuki Nishia has a chance at the far post, but Yuya Oki comes to the Atlas' rescue. Here in the 42nd minute, some nice intricate passing from Kashima as they approach goal. Shomodoi's shot brushed across the face. Into the second half and a deep corner finds Everaldo at the far post, but the goalkeeper, falling backwards, kicks this one away. From the corner which followed, a scramble in the box saw Kento miss out striking the crossbar. Leo Silva on the follow-up, too high. Ten minutes left now and a poor clearance from the goalkeeper. Leo Silva finds Araki and his right-footed pinpoint shot makes it 2-0 to the home team. Just a minute later, and the Antlers were looking for a third. Yasuchi Endo finds Araki. He thought it was his hat-trick, but it was denied by VAR. But Kashima would get their third goal in the 90th minute. Ryota Nagaki sending a wayward strike into the box, deflected home by Koki Mashida, a 3-0 victory for the home team. Having gone eight without a win, Avispa had struggled to get out of their mid-table slump. Their opponents were in similar form. Cerezo on a string of five draws and no wins in ten. This was anyone's game for the taking. An early break down the left-hand side for Cerezo. Hiroaki Okuno finds Adam Taggart and his flick over the bar. Five minutes later and a deep cross finds an unmarked Takeshi Kanomori. His less than deft touch, saved by the goalkeeper though. Six minutes from the half-time break and the right-back Emil Salomonson rather mishits a cross. It finds Yuya Yamagishi and that's 1-0 to Avispa. But there was time for Cerezo to respond before the break. As the ball's played into the box from the left-hand side, Adam Taggart gets his forehead to it, and we're even at half-time. 53rd minute now, and Masato Yuzawa's cross finds a huge battle at the far post. Takeshi Kanamori wins it, but can't keep his header down. Cerezo looking for their opportunity to take the lead. Now Yuki Fujita with the through ball, smart turn from Hiroaki Okuno, but his shot just wide of the upright. Still level with 16 minutes left, Riku Matsuda's shot, saved by Masaki Murakami. Now into the 96th minute, would we get a winner? Jordi Crew with the cross, but straight into the goal. Avispa collect the points. And will this signal their exit from mid-table? A crucial three points for Avispa. A look at the rest of the results then. Consarole winning an entertaining affair at home against Tokyo. Nothing to split the bottom sides, all square at Sendai, while Kashiwa held the leaders to a draw as well. The Marinos on a rampage, winning 5-1 over Oita, and Nagoya finally picking up a win after five games without one. A little stutter from Kawasaki as they drop points this round then, but still unbeaten in the league and six points ahead of the Marinos. A loss for Sagan sees them lose their position to Kashima, who break into the top three for the first time this season. Gamba continue to steadily pick up speed, moving ahead of their city rival Cerezo in the table. Little movement towards the end of the pile. Precious little time remains for the four teams who will find themselves on the chopping block at the end of the season.
Another round of fabulous football in the bag then. We hope you enjoyed every moment here with us. You know we'll be back with more. I'm Steve Dawson and we'll see you next time. Like, subscribe, push notification. Like, subscribe, push notification.